Okay, I just started recording. Okay, what's up everyone? Um, I'm Elric and today I've got a very, very special guest. His name is Dr. Patrick Liu. Uh, he's the only Singaporean I know that has publicly researched three of his own companies in three different stock exchanges before. Uh, Success Resources in Australian Stock Exchange, uh, HSR in the Singaporean Stock Exchange, and um, uh, Yahoo Group, which is a $12 billion dollar company in uh, New York Stock Exchange. Okay? So he's the only Singaporean to these three companies in three different stock exchanges. On top of that, he is the founder of Mapic, who is which is the largest uh, property investment community, arguably the largest in uh, Asia Pacific. Okay, and he has trained students in sixty one over different industry, sixty one over countries, and um, very very successful, made millions and millions of dollars doing property investing. And so today, I invited him to do um, an Ask Me Anything. And at the end of the Ask Me Anything, for those of you who stay all the way to the end. Uh, he also will be giving you a few gifts. I think it's like an ebook and a few checklists and all that kind of stuff. So all of you are going to gain so much of value, right? So what, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to unmute some of you. Uh, I'm going to unmute like some of you to ask him questions. And then um, Dr. Patrick will ask some questions. Hi, Dr. Patrick. So maybe you, you want to introduce a little bit about yourself first. Like, uh, um, you know, what, uh, what are the gifts that you'll be giving them at the end of the webinar and all that kind of stuff yeah okay if you stay on to the end we will give you some very very important game you can use for your life to make yourself more productive achieve better results uh, i will also be giving you very specific examples of properties you can own right now right now at a very very ridiculously low price i will show you exactly how you can buy property with very little or no money down and by tonight if you pay attention, you're going to take action, you can own a property in a very, very short period of time. But before I start, I want to introduce to you our keynote speaker. And our keynote speaker is none other than my youngest and most beautiful daughter, Miss Emma Liu. Come on, Emma. Come on, give Emma a big round of applause. Give All right, Emma man. A big, big, big round of applause, okay? Yeah. And uh, Emma told me a short while ago, she has got a very important message for everybody, right? Emma, you told me you got something very important to share with everybody, right? What are you going to share about? Oh, Emma is going to tell everybody how to achieve true freedom, right? But do you live out true freedom? What do you do? Okay, tell us, how do you live your life? You wake up every morning, you eat, you sleep, you have fun, you are very happy, and you enjoy your life thoroughly. And you bring love to everybody, joy to everybody, and peace to everybody. You make a big difference to the lives of everybody who meet you, right? They become a lot better, a lot happier after meeting you than before you, right? So that is true freedom. And now, Miss Emma Liu is going to fly to another planet to save the people there. So give Emma Liu a big round of applause. Everybody give her a big round of applause. She's flying off to save another planet. Okay, here awesome. goes. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. Patrick, for the introduction. Thank okay, you. so um, the first person I'm going to invite to ask you some questions is Phyllis. Phyllis Green. Uh, we, before we do that, uh, if it's okay, uh, Elric, I'd like to just share with everybody a very quick story. Sure. Uh, I'm very excited to meet all of you uh, online tonight. It's called Ask Me Anything, which means this is a no whole part huh? and, uh, and uh, free for all. You can ask me any question. I look forward yeah. to having aggressive questions, violent questions, abusive questions, <laughs> hand me down kind of questions. I'm happy to cater all the questions uh, and more importantly, the whole idea is to share with you how to own a property very, very quickly and own some of the best property with very little or no money down and if you stay out to the end, I promise you, I'll show you how you can own a property with very little money within a short period of time. But before we do that, I want to just quickly share with you uh, one of my life story. Can I share with you one of my life story, everybody? Sure. Okay, I take it as yes. Yeah, everyone's been so yeah. Okay, this story happened in 2003, and you know 2003, we have a major, a major crisis called the SARS crisis. The economy took a nosedive and the whole property market crashed. Now at that point in time, my whole business collapsed. And not only my business collapsed, you know, I owe people to the tune of millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars. I felt like I dropped into a deep and dark and bottomless hole. I feel like I've virtually gone to hell to come back to share with you uh, this story. You know, at that point in time, I received a very interesting call. Uh, hello, is that Patrick? Uh, Patrick speaking. 
Patrick, my name is Mr. Oz Human. I came from America. I flew all the way from America to see you. Oh, uh, Mr. Human, please call me Patrick and um, welcome to Singapore. Why do you want to see me? He said, really, I don't know why. I said, who asked you to see me? He said, I also don't know who asked me to see you. Then what shall we talk about? Frankly, I don't even know. Now, I don't know about you, when somebody flew in from a long distance away and they don't know the why, the what, and the how, what will you do? I dropped everything except my pants and went to see him. When I saw him, he asked me to tell him my story. Now, at that point in time, I only have one story. I have virtually gone through the pits of hell and I don't even know how I can make my way back, you know, to planet Earth. By the time I finished telling my story, I must have told my story with a lot of passion. He looked at me straight in the face and then he laughed at me. Can you believe it? He laughed at me. I could feel my temperature rising. I was controlling myself before, you know, I end up murdering somebody. And he told me a very interesting story. He said, many years ago, I have a similar experience, but not the same experience. You know, my whole business collapsed and I became officially bankrupt. My wife ran away from me and a Swedish flew to America to listen to my story. And when I finished telling him my story, he looked at me and he laughed. And so today, he said, I laugh at you. And he told me something very interesting which changed my life forever and ever. He said, you will never understand what you're going through. But one day, all this will come to pass. And when it's all over, you will realize you have a Joseph calling. Now, for those who don't know, Joseph is a historical character. He was betrayed by his brother, so as a slave to Egypt. And he was thrown into prison for a crime he did not commit. Can you imagine he spent 13 of his best years in prison? By the time he was released, he was promoted through the rank and file, and he, and he became one of the right-hand men of the pharaoh. And at a point in time, there was a major, major crisis in his whole country. There was famine throughout the country, and through his resourcefulness and resources, he was able to save his country. And his family came begging for help, and then he was able to save his family. Now, after that momentous uh, 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 meeting, I did not meet Mr. Oz Human. But I remember the story very well. Three years later, I cleared off all my debt. And short while later, I listed my company and made a lot of money. I realized that, you know, I have a special calling. And that's the reason why I'm so excited to meet all of you. Because, you know, especially for some of you here who are struggling through this crisis, my hearts, my thoughts, and my prayer go to you. And I want to do this because I want to give you good example, good strategies, specific ideas on how you can leverage on this crisis to make a lot of money, how you can own property with very little or no money down. And you stay on all the way to, it, all the, way to the end. I have got a lot of uh, very good free gifts to all of you. And more importantly, you know, I will give you specific examples of properties you can own right now. And I will show you how you can own properties with very little or no money down. I did it many years ago before I finished my studies. If I can do it many years ago, and over the years, I've improved all my models and strategies and tactics. I believe I can help you to own a property very quickly, at very little, with very little money or no money down. Okay, I'm ready now, uh, Elric, all yours. All right, okay. So the first person that will ask you a question is Phyllis. So I will unmute Phyllis. Okay, Phyllis, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, good. Hello. Yeah, so yeah, you have a question you want to ask Dr. Patrick? Yeah, hello, Dr. Patrick. Nice to see you again. Good to see yeah. you. Hi, so, um, okay, I understand you're a very seasoned investor. So, how many years of investment do you reckon you have uh, so far? That's a very good question. I know you'll find it very hard to believe I was born into uh, property investment. And tell you why, because I came from a very poor family. And so, at a very young age, even in primary school, I run a small little stall, a small little business in Sungai Road. And Sungai Road was the biggest flea market. And every day, I have to fight with many, many people to rent a small little space and pay the gangsters, the local gangster, for the space. And because we were so poor, I helped my father to rent out every possible space in our house. So every night, it is not, it's not abnormal to find many people sleeping in our living room. We could have rented out our toilet, you know, if we could possibly do that. So after I finished my studies, I joined the property and construction industry. 
And uh, I always tell people this, you can take me out of property investment, but you cannot take property investment out of me. So in total, I've been involved in property investment for more than 39 years now. 39 glorious years. I hope I've answered your question. Yes, you have. Um, so I understand you chose to uh, specialize in property investment because of your background, because of your childhood. But have you actually considered like other investments or why do you prefer property investments over other types of investments? That's a very good question. First of all, I must uh, share with all of you. Uh, many years ago, I used to run the Dow Jones Group. And for those who don't know, uh, that was way before Bloomberg. And 99.99% uh, .99 of financial investors and financial, financial traders, they were our customers. You know, so we, I, I had literally hundreds of terminals all over my office. You know, I have every uh, instrument of investments, you know, uh, captured on the screen. And I was able to study many instrument of investment. I was able to analyze many instrument of investment. I've come to a conclusion, the best way to become financially free is still through property investment. Now, why do I say that? In other instrument of investment, you need expert knowledge. You need deep research and analysis. You need sophisticated technology and other tools. You need to monitor the market day in and day out. But when it comes to property investment, all you need is common sense, which all of us have, and proper guidance. If you own a property, a very good property, especially during a crisis, you can buy a property at a very, very low price. And if you have a long-term rental contract with a very credible tenant, you know, you have a guaranteed monthly passive income. And this passive income grows over the years. And then when the crisis is over, you can make a lot of money. So that's the reason why I'm in property investment because I believe property investment can help you to achieve true freedom. And to me, true freedom means you need to have financial freedom, you need to have time freedom, you need to have lifestyle freedom to do whatever you want to do, enjoy whatever you enjoy, achieve whatever you achieve, and most importantly, you need to have contribution freedom. The freedom to be able to look after yourself give the best of life to your loved one, contribute to your community, your country, and the world at large, basically. So the best way to achieve this financial freedom, time freedom, lifestyle freedom, and contribution freedom is through property investment. I hope I've answered your question. Yes, thank you so much. And uh, my last question to you is, uh, I know that besides investing in local properties, you also invest in overseas properties. So can you share um, when you're investing in overseas properties, right? What are some of your key considerations, criteria, what you look out for when you want overseas properties? That's a very good question. You know, I tell my students, you cannot just be a local investor. You need to be a global investor. Because sometimes you can make a lot of money out there, not just making money in your own country. And very importantly, as an investor, you cannot put all your money into one basket. You need to di diversify, you know, your investment. And very often, you know, when the Singapore market is down, there'll be another country where the market is going up. So you can arbitrage between the two property cycle. You buy the property at a country where it's at its lowest point, you sell it at the highest point, and then you go to another country and buy at its lowest point, basically. So I look at four uh, major dimensions. I look at supporting factor. There must be a reason why the price, the value, and the profit will go up. So there are supporting factors that will you know, uh, determine your profit. And it's very predictable. The second factor I look for is called strategy factors. You see, if you look at properties, there are thousand and one things you can do with a property. There are gazillion ways you can value at the property. There are infinite number of ways you can make money from each and every property. And later on, maybe some of you want to ask some question. I'll show you how to make money for virtually every property. The third dimension is what I call a strength factor. Your, what you invest in may not be what I love to invest in because we all have our own unique strength, our own unique resources. But when it comes to property, there must be something distinctive. So I help my friends to invest in properties. You know, not only at a low price, not only they can make money. In future, Whoever has a lot more money cannot buy this property anymore because the property is so unique, so differentiated, so, so distinctive that nobody can buy this property anymore. Which means that your profit will be safe, will be stable, will be secure and sustainable. And then the last factor I look for is the sentiment factor. What is the consumer's 
a consumer sentiment about this property? What is the business sentiment? What is the economic sentiment about this property? So when you converge these four factors, the supporting factors, the strategy factors, the strength factors, as well as the sentiment factor, you'll find what I call the property gems that can help you become a multi-multi-millionaire. If some of you are interested, you know, you may want to ask me a specific example, like, you know, tell, tell me what property should I buy to make a lot of money. I'm happy to show you some real life examples, basically. I hope I've answered your question. Yes, perfect. Thank you so much, Dr. Patrick Liu. Appreciate your answers. All right. Okay, so next person, uh, I'll ask uh, is for Gracie. Wait, uh, I'll unmute her. Okay, yeah, Gracie, you can go ahead. Yeah, hi, Dr. Patrick Liu. Can you please advise us uh, under this current COVID-19 situation, is this a good time to do property investment? Okay, the question is, is this a good time to invest in property? Absolutely. When is the best time to buy property? I submit to you the best time to invest in a property is during a crisis. The worse the crisis, the better it is. And they call this the crisis of the century, the crisis of the last 1,000 years, which means this is the best opportunity in 1,000 years. And the next time you see this opportunity is probably 1,000 years later. Why do I say that? Why do I say that, you know, the best time to own a property is during a crisis? You think about it. During a crisis, most developers will stop developing properties. So when they stop developing properties, the supply of property will go on a downturn. And most ordinary men and women in the street will not buy a property. So when they don't buy a property, they have to rent the property. When they rent the property, the rental market goes through an upturn. And sellers know that the worst time to sell a property is during a crisis. You know, you'll be foolish to want to sell a property during a crisis. But unfortunately, there will be some people who have to sell the property during a crisis because of financial and all kinds of problems. And we are seeing all these problems right now. You have jobs problem, career problems, business problem, profit problem, cash flow problem, accident problem, emergency problem, marriage problem, maternity problem. I can go on forever and ever. So think about it. We now have the convergence of three major forces. Supply is going on a downtrend. Rental is going up on an uptrend. And you can buy property at a very, very low price. Okay? And if you invest in a very good property, and if the property is rented to a good tenant that signed a long-term tenancy agreement, which means, you know, you have a guaranteed you know, monthly yield, monthly rental returns. And uh, if, you, if I show you some of this property, you can get anywhere between 5 to 10% return. More money you can collect every month to service your money mortgage. And because you buy the property at the lowest possible point, once the crisis is over, you know, the prices will go up and the rental will go up. And all it takes is one simple idea and you become a multi multi millionaire. Of course, the question that begs to be answered is when is this pandemic going to be over? Do you think this pandemic will go on forever and ever? I think if it goes, if it goes on forever and ever, whatever you invest, make no sense at all. But we know that there are about five countries now that have suggested they are testing on a potential vaccine. They are testing a potential therapy to treat COVID-19. Uh, I just read uh, two days ago that Israel there are two companies in Israel that are testing the vaccine and they are ready to go and do human tests. Johnson & Johnson, a public listed company, a very, very huge company, have announced they are ready to do human tests. Now, for those who don't know, before you do human tests, you must do a series of clinical tests. You can't take medicine, intrusive medicine, and give it to a human. You know, so they have gone through a series of clinical tests and they must have some belief that they have the vaccine that can treat COVID-19. And they are public listed company. If they don't have this confidence level, if they have got no proof and evidence, the authorities will come down hard on them. So all experts, including Henry Kissinger, say, you know, this pandemic will last for 18 months. But you don't have to wait for 18 months. Why do I say that? The day when they announced they have found a vaccine, people will go back to the street, businesses will start to open up, 
and the property market will start to turn around. You don't have to wait for everybody to be vaccinated, everybody to be cured. I remember very clearly during SARS crisis, you know, when they said we have found a cure for SARS, immediately the economy start turning around, immediately businesses start to improve, immediately the property market start to turn around. So I believe that, you know, within the next 12 to 18 months, a cure can be found. And that's why I say you only have a small window, one very small window to invest in a very, very good property. And within one or year, one year or so, you can make your millions of dollars. And if some of you are interested, I'm happy, you know, to go and look for some good example to show you of the kind of property you need to invest in to make a lot of money. I hope I've answered your question. Yes, thank you so much, Dr. Patrick. Okay, um, my second question. Um, you have been through so much Asian financial crisis, SARS, global financial crisis. With regards to the current situation, this COVID situation, how is it any different or somewhat similar to what you saw before? Can you share with us your views? Okay, very good question. Right now, uh, a lot of experts say, you know, the, the COVID-19 crisis is the crisis of the century. Why do they say that? You are hit by different fronts. You are hit not just because of a healthcare crisis. You are hit by economic crisis. And in a way, you are also hit by geopolitical crisis. So you have, con you have convergence of three major forces coming together uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to converge to a form what is called uh, the crisis of the century. But I also believe this is also the perfect spring. This is a time when people are very worried, very scared. You see, how do we make money in property investment? I call this the four horsemen of destruction. First of all, ignorance. A lot of people are ignorant, they don't know. Apathy, I don't care. Fear, I'm worried. Greed, oh, you know, I, I go Google and Gaga and try to do all kinds of things basically. So, how do we make money? You know, in a little nutshell, most people out there don't know anything about property investment, don't care anything about property investment. And I've seen this again and again and again during crisis, people go crazy, they overreact, they sell the property at the wrong bottom price. You know, and those who know about property investment will always make money for people who don't know anything about property investment. Those who learn will always make money for people who don't want to learn. Those who take action will always make money for people who don't want to take action. So what's, how is this different from the other crisis? In the other crisis, many, many, many people became rich and wealthy because of property investment, including Warren Buffett, one of the most successful investors during our time. And I believe this is the best time for you to get involved in property investment. And I want to show you some real life example of how it can be done. Thank you, Dr. Patrick Liu. Can you help us deconstruct your model on how you can buy properties with little to no money down? Okay, let me quickly explain it this way. We all know this in every country, in every city, in every town, a lot of people became rich and wealthy because of property investment. Now, the question you have to ask yourself is this. How did they become so rich and wealthy through property investment? There are only a few common sense, common sensical options, right? One is their parents give them the money. And after their parents give them the money, they became very rich and wealthy. Is this the case all the time? I don't think so. Is it because they gamble and make money? I also don't think so. Is it because they found gold and silver or oil and gas and that's why they became rich and wealthy? No. Many of these people are basically very poor. They became rich and wealthy because of property investment and they learn how to buy property with very little or no money now. Let me give you an example. I'm not asking for permission, but I'll tell it anyway. Mr. Chin Che Kwong is one of, the, one of the most successful property investor. And if everything goes correctly, he's going to be our next billionaire. And he's the founder and chairman of Oxley Holding. And guess what he was doing before? He was selling Ota, you know, like satay stick, 10 cent, 10 cent, 10 cent. Do you think he makes all his money from property investment? There's another group of people, we call them the Kopi Tiam King. You know, all of them are multi, multi-millionaire. And how did they become so rich? They learned how to buy coffee shop at very little or no money down. So I'm going to give you some really uh, specific example. I'm going to share with you, for example, how I owned my first property before I finished my studies. I, 
I started working when I was very, very young. I had three jobs literally when I was growing up. In the morning, I go to the school. In the afternoon, I run a little uh, stall. It's not a stall, it's, it's just a little corner where you put a floor mat and I invest all kinds of things and sell throughout the day. And in the evening, I will be doing door-to-door -door selling, Saraba stall, I will be involved in Pasamalam business, all kinds of businesses. So since young, I mix around only with adults. And my adult friend tell me we all work for the landlord. If you ask around, uh, work, if you work for any organization, most of the money they spend is spent in either buying a property or renting a property. While the whole company is working very, very hard, at the end of the month, you pay the money rental. And meanwhile, the landlord, you know, is having a ball of a time just collecting rent and he's probably enjoying his life. One of my landlord, I just call him up, he says he's going on a vacation. I don't know where is he going in a work or vacation. But at the end of the day, he's having a great life just collecting rents, you know, from uh, all of us basically. So I decided that I want to be a landlord at a very, very young age. I specialize in looking for families in big trouble. And there will always be families with big troubles at any point of time in the economy or the property cycle. I specialize in finding families with addiction problems and specifically gambling addiction. So there was this family in Damok Street where, you know, the family gambler lost a lot of money and money lenders were hounding them, haunting them day and night. And uh, these are both legal money lenders as well as illegal money lenders, we call them a lot. And they were painting all kinds of evil things outside their house. So they were very, very desperate to sell their property. And they, want, they needed the money very, very quickly to solve all their problems. I could easily buy the property at $300,000 in those days. You know, and $300,000 in those days is like $3 million today. And I can easily sell it for $600,000. I look for somebody who is well to do. And there are always a lot of well to do people around you. So I approached this well to do person. I said, I give you a good deal. You come out with 10%, I will come out with 90%. When we make money, you take 50% and I will take 50%. I think it's a good deal. So I showed him the property. He could very easily see that this property can make a lot of money. He gave me $30,000. In those days, the bank would give us $270,000, would lend us $270,000. So we bought the property and sold it very, very quickly. I went back to him and said, you gave me $30,000, I'm giving you $150,000 back. I'm giving you 500% profit. He was very happy. He became my friend. Until today, he's still my friend. I have 3,000 friends like him. So when I was in school, I went back to school a few years ago to do my doctorate degree in financial intelligence. How do you create your money? How do you grow your money? How do you spend your money? How do you protect your money wisely? And one night at 2 a.m., I was thinking very hard. How do people become rich and wealthy? Do you think the poor people will be poor forever? Are they condemned to be poor forever? Can they break the poverty cycle? Are there poor people that became rich? And suddenly, it occurs to me. Poor people will always say, I'm poor because I have no money. And because I have no money, I'm poor. And rich people will always say, I have money, but I don't have deals. So watch very carefully. Think very carefully. Poor people say, I have no money. Rich people say, I have no deals. What should poor people do? And the answer is very obvious. Poor people should look for deals for the rich people. And that's why I always say this. The greatest poverty is not a poverty of money. The greatest poverty is a poverty of dreams and action. And I will do everything I can to help all my friends to help all of you, if you're my student, to look for the best deals. And this is the best time to look for deals. I don't have enough time and energy to look for all the deals. I will teach you how to look for deals. And you can find a very good deal, I will finance you. And I have 3,000 people in my network that will be more than happy to finance you. Why not? If you can help us to make money, why would we not want to finance you and share the profit with all of you? So my point is very simple, simply this. This is just a simple example to prove to you when you leave this webcast, don't say you cannot buy property free of charge. Just say you don't have dreams, you're not willing to take action. If you're willing to take action, I'm, I'm more than happy to train you, to coach you, to mentor you, to look for deals. And there are many, many good deals around. And once you can find very good deals, come and look for me. You don't even have to look for me.
You can look for many, many people. Show them you can make a lot of money. Prove to them you can make a lot of money. I'm sure many people will be more than happy to finance you. If you want a specific example, later on I can give you one, a few specific examples of how people have become rich and wealthy just looking for deals for rich and wealthy people. And then later on, if you're interested, I can show you real life examples of properties you can buy right now, right now. And uh, with very little money and make a lot of money in a short while time. I hope I've answered your question. Yes, yes. What a, well, overwhelming answers that we get from you, Dr. Patrick Liu. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. All right. Okay. So the next person uh, will be Audrey. Okay, I'm just going to unmute her real quickly. Okay. Audrey, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, good. Yeah. Hi. Good evening, Dr. Patrick. Thank you for sharing your wealth of wisdom with us. Um, I think, uh, you know, as you have shared just now, there are deals and then there's the finances as well. But I think many people have this mindset. They think that owning a place, uh, a piece of real estate in Singapore is out of their reach. You know, so what, in your opinion, and with your extensive experience, right, is the reasonable minimum amount that one needs to set aside um, in order to participate in the property market in Singapore? You know, uh, maybe we are talking about, say, lump sum and like monthly loan repayment commitments. Okay, very good question. Um, first of all, let me just clarify. A lot of people say, you know, it takes a lot of money. If you keep thinking you need a lot of money to make money, then I have to tell you this, most of us will stay poor. Most of the poor will remain poor because there are few poor people that start off with a lot of money. And most people have this thing that they need money to buy property. Let me ask you this question. Can money solve all the problems in the world? Is money a solution for everything? When somebody buy a property, yes, sorry, when somebody sell a property, yes, they want money but they don't want money for money's sake. They want money for what money can do for them. It's like telling your children who misbehave themselves, you know, let me give you money. Stop misbehaving yourself. Is that the way to solve the problem or are you creating bigger problem? My point is very simply this. There are other ways to own a property without having to spend money basically. And the other thing I want to tell people is this, you know, there are ways and means to be able to Replace money, you know, and, and own property basically without the money. Okay, I give an example. You can own a property with as low as thirty to fifty thousand dollars. I have made, I've, I've, I've helped my a lot of my friends to do that. And there was a time where we even can own a property for less than ten thousand dollars. But this one take a bit of time to find. But right now, if you're interested, I can show you a specific example of properties you can earn, you can own for thirty to fifty thousand dollars. If some of you are interested. You know, ask me this question. I don't want to spend a lot of time just to answer one question. And if you zero down, narrow down, I can give you some real life example of properties you can own for anywhere between thirty to fifty thousand dollars. Okay, thank you very much, Doctor Patrick. Um, on the similar topic, right? So, what is the kind of mindset uh, that you would expect someone to have in order to succeed in property investment? I think the mindset is first of all you need to learn. Like anything else in life, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And so you need to learn. So I give you an example. If you don't know how to drive a car, you would think that it is very hard, very difficult to drive a car. You can't learn on your own. You can't pray that heaven will drop the knowledge to you. You can't watch a television show to learn how to drive a car. You definitely need a driving instructor. And once you know how to drive, let me tell you this, ask any driver. You can drive without thinking about how to drive a car. It becomes part of sixth sense. If you don't know how to swim, you can't swim on your own. You need a swimming coach. You can't ride a bicycle on your own. Somebody needs to pull you and guide you basically. So in the same way, if you want to be rich and wealthy, the best way to do it is to find a mentor. If you want to buy property and buy property wisely, you can't just hope that heaven will drop the knowledge. You can't ask your poor friends to teach you how to buy and own a property. You can't ask people who don't know how to make money from property investment to teach you. You need to get somebody who's ready to teach you, coach you, and mentor you so that you know how to become rich and wealthy. And I tell you why, because when somebody is willing to guide you, a few things will happen. First of all, you have confidence. You need confidence because confidence is part of what is called self-efficacy. And research in universities have proven that if you want to be rich and wealthy, you must be you must have self-efficacy. 
you must have the self-confidence and you must have the competence to know what to do. You need to have what I call K-A-S-H. You need to have a working knowledge. K, you need to have the right attitude. You need to have the right skill set and the right habits. So knowledge, attitude, skills, skill set and habits. And then you need to have a community of people. A community of people who are specialists, who are experts, who are professionals that will surround you, support you, and help you to be able to own a property and make a lot of money from property investment. And the good news is this, there are many of such possibilities available in the market. I will look forward to be able to spend time with you, to train you, to coach you, mentor you, to become a property investor and make a lot of money, especially during this crisis. Wow, cool. So meaning that with all the local Singapore property cooling measures that are in place now, we can still buy properties and make money from it? Definitely. I know people ask me this question. I get questions. I, I get people asking me, me this question in every meeting, in every discussion, in every seminar. Can I still make money from cooling measure? Let me put it this way to you. With all the cooling measure, I've counted 25 major and minor cooling measure since 2009. You know, the government basically has been clamping the property prices down. Let me ask you this question. After all that the government has done, did our property market crash? The reality is no. So it goes to prove that our, the fundamentals for our property market is very, very strong. So I want to just refocus you. How do you make money? What is the formula for profit? Revenue minus expenses equals to profit. Now, which is more important, profit or expenses? Of course, it's profit. Now, let me ask you this question. If you can spend a bit of money because of the cooling measure, but you can make a lot of money, is it okay to spend some money? Obviously. And because of the cooling measure, that's the reason why sellers are very desperate. And that's the reason why developers are very desperate. And that's the reason why during a crisis, they will sell you at a lower price. And there are many ways to leverage on the, on the cooling measure. I'm not a lawyer, I'm not an expert, but if you are my friend, you are my student, I can recommend you three lawyers that will help you to look at uh, the cooling measure and see how you can leverage on the cooling measures to make a lot of money. But very importantly, I want you to know this. The cooling measures prevent you basically from owning residential property. In other words, if you stay in the HDB flats, if you have a private residential home, the government doesn't want you to speculate. The government doesn't want you to own another residential property. Why? Because the government doesn't want the property prices to go skyrocketing up. But let me ask you another question. If you cannot buy residential property, is it okay to buy commercial and industrial property? Can you make money from commercial and industrial property? In fact, very often you make more money from commercial property and industrial property. So if you're my friend or you're my student, I can show you, even if you stay in the HDB flat, even if you have not completed your five years of MOP, I can show you how to invest in industrial and commercial property and still make lots and lots and lots of money, basically. And I want to say this to all of you. You know, there is a, there is a political reason why it is important to invest in property right now. During January election 2011, property market was going high and the PAP lost a lot of votes. The ruling party lost a lot of votes. In 2015, when the market is very, very soft, you know, the, the PAP won back a lot of words, votes. It's like the people of Singapore telling the ruling party, we do want prices to go aggressively high. So they have been clamping down the property. But let me ask you a question. Can the government keep pushing the property prices down? No. If they do that, you never know one day the whole property market will crash. But if the ruling part, if the government can introduce a cooling measure, they can also withdraw the cooling measure. And I believe this in the next few months, because of cooling measure, anybody who wants to sell property will be very, very desperate. So somehow they have to compensate back for the cooling measure. And that's why this is a good time to invest in property. So you can, you can look at residential property in some ways, but you have to pay some money. But even if you don't want to do that, there's still industrial and commercial property where there are lots of opportunities out there to make lots and lots of money, basically. And if you're okay. interested, later on, I can give you some real life and specific examples. Wow, thank you very much. So cool. So basically, you're saying that you can help me to own a property, be it residential or commercial, with a little bit of money or just uh, or no money down That's right. during this period? That's right. And uh, hopefully, uh, towards the end, uh, you know, if uh, some of you are interested, 
I'll be very happy to uh, find some property. I have a phone somewhere. If I can find my phone, I can. I have a lot of uh, photographs, a lot of images of properties. I can show you some properties that I bought not too long ago and why I believe we can make a lot of money. And I, uh, I am very happy to uh, coach you, mentor you, and show you how you can also own uh, some of these properties at the same time. Wow, thank you so much for your sharing so far. Uh, I think it's been very enlightening for me. Thank you very much. Awesome. Okay. So, um, Dr. Patrick, just now you mentioned uh, you'll be giving some bonuses, right? Maybe you want to elaborate a little bit more about that. Okay. Do you have a picture somewhere? I think okay, let me find. I can show uh, you uh, uh, some pictures uh, of what we're yeah. going to give them. Can you see the screen? Here we are. Uh, okay. So, we are giving you, uh, you know, two very powerful tools. Uh, one is how to work at home. I think most of us are working at home. How do you uh, become productive? How do you achieve better results? So we have a checklist on how you can uh, become more efficacious uh, working at home. And then we, for those of you who are working in a company, working in an organization, you know, we have a checklist uh, called business continuity plan. And as long as you or your bosses go through a checklist, you will make sure that your company is stable, secure, and sustainable. And we also want to give you a crash course, a crash course on how you can own property with very little or no money down. So we have recorded some of our some of our salient points on how you can do that in this crash course. This is my free gift to everybody for joining me uh, in this free for all, no hope but ask me any question session. Okay, good. So uh, okay, guys, so all of you can go to this link, bit.ly slash property success two. And then, uh, okay, let me show you how, how you look like. You'll see a landing page that looks something like that. So tomorrow at 7.30 p.m., he's gonna, uh, Dr. Bashir is going to do a webinar. So you just fill in your first name, last name, and email, then you receive all the notifications. And these are the things that he's going to cover, okay? So just copy and paste my, my, my link, uh, my, like this link, into your browser. And then you all can, okay, let me just share, see how I can share a link. Um, share a link, yeah. Okay, uh, Dr. Vishy, give me a while, uh. let me just. No way, no way, take your time. Maybe you want to have some water or something first? <laughs> I've been drinking, yeah. That's good, that's good. Well, I'm super amazed by the answers that you are giving. All very detailed, some more. Uh, we yeah. are. Um... Okay, let me see how I can. So how do I share a link? Um, yeah, yeah. You can try sharing it to the chat. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I shared through the chat already. You just have to copy and paste. Yeah. Okay, later on we continue the next two questions. Uh. We just, let me just. How do I do it? Uh? Okay, but, but basically, you're just copying this. Like, I'll send you all the link later like, to register for this, okay? So let's just continue. Um, I'm gonna. Maybe uh, I would like to just uh, say that uh, today is uh, no hope, but you know, uh, free for all. Ask me any questions. So today is very, very unstructured very, very messy. Uh, I'm going all over the places at this point in time, you know, and uh, so Ellery asked me to come back for another webcast so that we can uh, share with you our model, our system, and our strategies and some of our tactics on how you can own property with very little or no money down. So in this uh, live webcast, you know, it'll be, it'll be uh, very systematic, very procedural, so I'll show you step by step you know, what you can own to, uh, what property you can own to be rich and wealthy, when you can own those property, how you can own those property, and I will show you how you can own a property as soon as possible. So join me on this webcast, bring your friends along, and uh, it's going to be a, it's going to be a content-rich session, it's going to be a very practical session on how you can own property as soon as possible. Uh, Dr. Patrick, uh, Vince Fu asked if this applies to Malaysia also. Absolutely, definitely. Uh, I want to tell you this, uh, I was born a Malaysian. Uh, I'm still uh, very proud of uh, Malaysia. I love your country. I love your culture. I love your people. 
and you know that you now have a restriction on your movement order and most people are staying at home. And you and I know these developers are stuck right now. Nobody's going to your show flat. And it's very hard to sell their properties online. It's not that it can't be done, but very few people can do it. So if you are the developer, what will you do? You have two choices. Okay, you hold on to the property. You have brick and mortar. Your money is stuck in the brick and mortar. And it, it may affect your, your company, affect your profitability, affect your cash flow. Or you need to sell the property. In fact, you know, I can give you a real life example of uh, some of these developers. They are calling me every day now and say, Patrick, I've got some of this property. You know, do you have any of your students who are happy to buy them? You know, we'll give you a substantial discount. In fact, just between you and me, they are willing to give discounts that they will not give to their own countrymen. And the reason is because if a Malaysian developer advertise they're going to drop the price, nobody will trust them anymore. Nobody will buy from them their property anymore. And the people who bought from them will curse and swear at them, basically. So he's saying that, are you able to, you know, come together with your student and buy by bulk basis? And the interesting thing is that they're willing to not only negotiate the price, they're willing to give us very good terms and conditions to own the property very, very quickly. So if you're my student, I can show you a lot of property in Malaysia you can buy at a very, very cheap price. So if you go to Penang, for example, one of the biggest developers called Hunza. You know, during the Asian crisis, I saved Hunza. I literally saved Hunza. You know, I sold, I got rid of a lot of the property for him, but of course at a very good price. It is a win-win relationship. You know, we got it at a very low price and he get the money to roll his money and turn around. And then during the SARS crisis, I have a company called KSL. Mm. And KSL was a very unknown developer. And uh, we helped them to get rid of a lot of the property, you know, during the SARS period. And as a result, they became one of the most profitable developers. They probably became one of the top three most profitable developers. And until today, they're still one of the biggest developers. And all because during the SARS crisis, we helped them. So I can go on telling you stories like this. Yeah. So if you're from Malaysia, you know, you should learn from me because, you know, the strategies that I use are radical. I know they're over there and their ideas probably have got around the market. But with my ideas, you can apply in Malaysia. You have first mover advantage to use my strategy to make a lot of money, especially during time during, especially during this time in a crisis, basically. Okay, Dr. Patrick, so uh, the next person will be Ozan. Ozan, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, can good. So uh, you can start asking a question. Uh, hi, Dr. Patrick Liu. Thank you for sharing all your tips in the current market and the pointers you have given us. Uh, I just want to check, because the property market is a very big market, be it uh, local market or emerging markets, etc. So, uh, based on your experience, uh, when as a complete beginner, should we uh, focus on the commercial area in the current crisis or should we focus on the residential area for better opportunities? That's a very, very good question. Uh, I must compliment you. You're very good looking. Uh, for me, I thought I'd be, I'm watching Bollywood movie. <laughs> and I love the fishes behind you. I was a bit caught up with the fish around you. Are you a fish lover? Are you a fish lover? Or are, is this somebody I'm else's fish? Oh, you're, you're being muted. Okay. So, very quickly, you know, people always ask me this question. Should I buy residential property or commercial property? Should I buy freehold property or leasehold property? Should I be buy in the east or buy in the west? Should I buy this property or the other property? And I always tell people this, you know, this is probably not the question you should be asking. Sometimes in life, the quality of your life depends on the quality of question you ask yourself. In fact, the quality of your life depends on the quantity of quality question you ask yourself. And all of us ask ourselves question all the time. For example, if you say, how come my life is so horrible, you have a horrible life. But you say, how come my life is so wonderful, you will have a wonderful life. So the question is not really, should I buy this property or buy their property? The question you should ask is this, what property should I buy right now that will help me to make the most money? So what I teach my friends is I teach them not to fall in love with the property. It is not whether it is the type of property, the, 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 the tenure of the property, the location of property, but fall in love with the numbers. You know, which property make you the most money, especially during a crisis? You know, so I give you an example. 
You know, for example, you know, you, you want to look for a very desperate seller. Why desperate sellers sell you at the lowest possible price? And if they sell you at the lowest possible price, you can make the most money, right? And then you say, you know, what kind of, uh, what kind of people, you know, uh, need to sell at a very, very low price? So, for example, if you say this could be somebody who lost his job. So, I give you a real life example. You know, in the last crisis, you know, one of my uh, friends came to me. He's my childhood friend. He was a CEO, CEO of a multinational company. And because of a crisis, he lost his job. And the worst thing is that he was uh, paying mortgage payment for two properties. One of his properties, he still owed the bank $300,000. And the bank was pounding on him, haunting him every day. Why? Because the bank knows that he has lost his job. He doesn't have a monthly salary. And the worst thing is that he has been late in his mortgage repayment. And he was very worried that the bank would uh, you know, confiscate his property, auction away his property, and sell it for maybe slightly above $300,000 just to get their money back, basically. He came to me, he said he wanted to sell the property. I backed him, I went on my knees and literally he backed him. Don't sell the property because in a, cri in a crisis, there are very little buyers. You know, and you're not going to get very good prices and they're going to give you ridiculous prices. You know, but he said, I have no choice. I lost my job. I don't have a monthly salary. If the bank, you know, auction away my property, I will be in dire straits. You know, so help me up. So I introduced him to a friend of mine, introduced him to my student. And cut a long story short, they bought a property at $680,000. $680,000. He was very, very happy. You know, in a way, he thanked me until today because I saved him. I got him the money. He was able to uh, settle the bank's debt. He's got money to keep his family afloat until he finds the next job, basically. But the student of mine who bought the property, a short while later, sold it for, sold it for one over million dollar. I mean, he made a profit of more than one over million dollar, all within a very short period of time. And that's why I said, in a crisis, if you look for, it's not a question of which property you buy. The question now is, which property should I invest in to make the most money? Uh, I want to just uh, tell you by, if you come to my next seminar, uh, I have a chart and it's a very systematic chart. I will show you what to buy, what kind of property to look for to make the most money. If you want to make $1 million, this is what to look for. You want to make, you want to make $5 million, this is what you look for. You want to make more than $10 million, this is what you look for. So join me in the next seminar and I'll show you specifically what kind of property you need to buy to make a lot of money. And it's free of charge. Come and join me. Bring your friends along. And I will prove to you through my taxonomy, you know, the kind of property you need to buy to make a lot of money. Okay. Uh, thank you. I have a second question just after this as you covered. So we are buying these properties for the lower price. But I believe you're not just waiting on the property, but you are doing some modifications, changes, sometimes increase the property value. Can you give some tips on this, how we can increase the property that we buy, the value of it, so that we can sell it for higher value and profit more? Very good. You are a man of my heart. You have actually jumped the gun. This is one of the, uh, what I call the kindergarten level uh, way of making money that I plan to share in the next webcast. A lot of people don't realize this. If you invest in any other instrument investment, you will invest in stocks, in uh, forex, in commodity, in crypto. There's nothing you can do about it. You can only pray that the price will go up. You pray that somebody will give you some degree of dividends. But when you invest in property, you are the master of your own destiny. You think about it. You look at a property. You can tear it down. You can build it up. You can add on. You can subtract. You can change the tenancy. You can change the tenancy mix. You can change the features, you can change the fixtures, you can change the furniture, you can change the furnishings. There are 1,001 ways to change a property. There are gazillion ways to invest in a property, to value add the property. There are infinite number of ways to make money for each and every property. And uh, that's the reason why a lot of my students, they can go to any property and they know how to make money for each and every property. Just thinking about what to change, what to value add. So I'll give you a simple example. And uh, tomorrow, when doing the webcast, I can give you even more example. I like to buy horrible, horrible looking property. People tell me, you're stupid. Why do you want to buy horrible looking property? Nobody looks for horrible looking property. But you think about it. When you see a horrible looking property, it means the owner don't love the property. 
if the owner don't love the property, he will have to sell you at a low price. And during a crisis, he has to sell you at an even lower price. Okay? And what I'll do is that I will renovate the property. Now, the strategy is very simple. This is not renovate to use or renovate to stay. This is renovate to sell. There is a world of difference between renovating to sell and renovating to stay or renovating to use. Most people buy second cars from a second hand car dealer shop. And if you go to a second car dealer shop, you look at a very old car, they polish it up, it looks big and span and it looks very, very nice. But you and I know this, they do it up to sell and the polishing will not last. After a while, you revert back to looking like old car. So a lot of people don't know, uh, never renovate before they sell the property. A lot of people don't know how to renovate so that they can sell. And I want to tell you this, now, this uh, idea about renovating to sell can make money during good times, during bad times, at any one point of time in the economic cycle or property cycle. And if you know how to renovate correct, correctly, you can make money from almost every property imaginable. Why? It's called consumer sentiments. How do people buy property in Singapore and all over the world? They use their hearts, they never use the head. They fall in love with the property, they did not fall in love with the numbers. They are captured by what they see. If they see a property that looks very, very good, chances are they think it's a good property. But if you are an astute investor, if you are my student, you will look very closely at the numbers before you look at a property. And by doing this, you can make a lot, a lot of money. And they thought maybe one of you uh, in the crowd uh, out there can ask me specific example and I can show you some real life example of properties you can own at this point in time. Okay. I hope Thank I've answered you your question. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was a very detailed answer. Thank you very much. So I will look for your uh, course and the webinar as well, the next one. The last question I will be asking is, now we buy the property, we do the required uh, renovations, adding up the rooms or the other uh, stuff as well, and we know it is the right time to sell the property, to get the maximum out of it. How do you recommend us to find the customers? What are the best ways to find the right customers who can pay us the right prices so that we can profit? Maybe if it's okay, uh, I can give you a real life example. Can I show you a real life sure. example? That would be amazing. Uh, instead of telling you some theory, because I'm not an academician, I'm not a theoretician, I'm a practitioner, I invest in properties very actively a few times in a year. Let me, let me find a real life example. If it's okay, maybe I will. And then I can uh, explain a bit more uh, tomorrow. Let me see if I can find something I can show it to you. Uh, okay, this is a property that I have one of my students to get involved with this uh, property. Uh, okay, uh, this is just downloaded from uh, Google Earth. I downloaded this uh, not too long ago. But I don't know if you can see this. Uh, can, can, you, can you see this? Okay, it doesn't matter. This is, uh, this is a Google Earth. It's a commercial area and it's a fast growing area. There are major developments underway about to be completed. And during a crisis, you know, the landlord wanted to rent this property and he was very desperate. He saw property prices coming down and he saw renter coming down. So when my, when my, I, I helped my student to rent this property at a very, very low price. And what we did was we subdivided the property. So let me see, let me see this example. This is an example, it may not be the same example. Uh, so basically you, 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 you subdivide the property you, sub, you subdivide the property into four portions. So you subdivide, you know, and you sublet the property to A, B, C, and D. And this is why I call the sum of the parts is bigger than the whole. Again, when you divide them in the smaller areas, you know, the quantum uh, rental is lower. Therefore, there is a bigger market to find tenants. And uh, so my student collect rent from A, B, C, and D and they end up paying uh, the renter to the landlord. And in the end, he make a lot of money. And over time, just for one simple strategy, he makes seventy dollars to $80,000. And with this simple strategy, he can go on owning a lot of property, literally by riding on the renter itself. And you think about a simple strategy like this, there are many ways to tweak the strategies, many ways to make it even better to make more money. Let me give you a simple example. We add, I have him to add one clause into a renter. And the clause basically say, 
the landlord cannot increase the rental by a certain amount. In other words, there's a cap, there's a ceiling beyond which he cannot increase the rental. So, for example, every three years, he can only increase the rental by five to seven percent. Three years again, three years later again, five to seven percent. So, he has a fixed rental increase for a long, long time to come. And of course, you know, he didn't give the same uh, ceiling to his subtenants. So, when the market improves, when the rental goes up, can you imagine this is a rental he's paying the landlord over time? And this was the amount of money he was collecting. Over time, he was collecting more and more and more money. You know, and today, you know, from the same property, he has been sitting on it for 10 over years now. You know, and uh, he's got many of this property that gives him about seventy to eighty thousand dollar every month. With seventy to eighty thousand dollar, I'm sure you can retire very happily and have a good time, don't you? Yes, agree. So I can go on give you a lot of examples like this. I can go on give you very specific, very specific example like this. You can make a lot of money from there. Thank you very much, Doctor Patrick. You. Okay, great. So the next person we have Tracy. Yeah, I'm gonna unmute her first. Okay, Tracy, can you hear us? Hey, wait, you, wait, Tracy, you must unmute. Uh, hey, yeah. Okay. Hi. Hi. Okay. Hello, Rick. Okay, good. Uh, Ozan, you mute yourself, huh? Okay, good. Yeah. So, Tracy, you can ask your question. Hi. Good evening, Doctor Patrick Liu. Uh, I would like to ask you about this term, uh, no money down, because I've heard this like really from everywhere, and I heard from different school of thoughts because I also attended a few, uh, quite a few, uh, so called property investment sharing. So that's one, one, uh, so called guru in this industry la, uh, which say that you know don't go for that you know because no money down equals to you must be back borrow or steal you know. Uh, so my question is. How can we really do this or, or something that I've learned before is either you be a loan bearer and get a few partners. You, you take the loan and after that, you do need to uh, fork out any cash because you can loan. That is uh, in the industrial property context. So uh, my question for this no money down is like, can it really be done? If so, how? Then even Singapore residential property can also do it. Okay, that's a very good question. Uh, I like your question because uh, I think there are five questions in one question. Sorry, <laughs> I'm trying to maximize yeah, everything. Don't worry, no worry, no worry, no worry. No worry. Uh, you know, uh, first of all, uh, don't call me Dr. Patrick, call me Patrick will do because when my wife call me uh, Dr. Patrick Liu means I'm in big, big trouble. Okay, okay first of all, uh, if you want to learn how to drive, you don't go to somebody who don't know how to drive. If you tell somebody who don't know how to drive, teach me how to drive, and he has never seen a car before, he will tell you there's no such thing as a car. There's no such, no way you can drive a car, you know, and there's no way they can teach you how to drive a car, right? We don't know what we don't know. Yeah. And uh, if they know, so there are a lot of people that who don't know enough things, don't go to them basically. If you say it cannot be done, it will never be done. But as okay. I mentioned just now, a lot of people have become rich and wealthy. You know, my good friend Sam Goy, Sam Goy is known as the Popia King, you mm -hmm. know, and if you uh, remember last year, first day of Chinese New Year, I went to visit his house, you know, and he's a multi, multi billionaire. Unfortunately, he was having a funeral because his son mm -hmm. passed away at 47 years old. And you ask Sam Goy, Sam Goy, how did you become so rich and wealthy? Is it because you sell Popia skin? And you and I know Popia skin is not high tech. If selling popia skin can make him a multi multi billionaire, then you and I should go and sell popia skin, right? So he'll tell you, I make most of my money for property investment. I'll give you another real life example. David Teo. David Teo and I sit on the same board of director for a charity organization. He's the founder and chairman of Super Coffee Mix, three in one coffee. And we ask him, David, how do you make 400 over million dollars? You mean you sell three in one coffee? You are high class kopikia and you make so much money. He will tell you, no, I make most of my money from property investment. You know, a lot of kopikia kings. The last one who sold his kopikia to NTUC Food Fair, I met up with the former chairman of NTUC Food Fair, who was the former minister. And uh, she was saying that this guy easily made 
more than $100 million. And the interesting thing is that most of these people are not educated. So I came to one conclusion, the problem with you and me is because we went to school. And because we went to school, our brain is being damaged. There are a lot of people who are so arrogant to say it cannot be done. They know everything, it cannot be done. Then the simple question is this, how can these guys become rich and wealthy basically? Right? So just now I give you a very simple example. You know, and a very simple example is this. If you tell me you are poor and you don't have money and because you don't have money, you are poor, does that mean that poor people will always be poor? That they will never be able to break out of their poverty cycle? Not true. Okay? How, how do the poor become rich? The poor people say, I have no money. Rich people say, I have money, no deals. So poor people can help rich people to find the deals. If you can find the deals, you know, there's a lot of way to make money. I'll give you a very simple example. I have a young little girl. She was only about 18 or 19 years old. She can't even sign a contract. When she signs a contract, you know, she has to bring her father and mother to sign for her. So we saw a property and I'm in Beach Road. And this is like a, a big office space. And uh, somebody wanted to uh, sell the property. And uh, so we went to find out that there is a tenant inside there. And the tenant basically, you know, have been there for 10 or 20 years. It's like, a, it's like a retail business. People go in there to book their travel service, book their holiday tour, book their airline tickets. They've been around for 10 or 20 years, you know, in, uh, in uh, the building. It used to be known as the Plaza Hotel. You remember Plaza Hotel? There's one big space. It used to have a lot of uh, uh, people in the travel and airline business. And uh, so we found out that the tenant has been there for a very long time and he was paying way below market price. And it happens all the time in Singapore. You get a guy to move into an office space, he pay the market price. But when the market goes up and because he's a very good tenant, a landlord, you know, say, okay, every three years just increase by 5%, increase by 8%. Without realizing that the market price and the actual price in Canada was very... Uh, there was a big difference basically. So cut a long story short, we went to ask him, you know, are you going to rent this space because the renter is going to run out within a month? He said, yes, because this is my business. Without my business, I cannot survive. I have nothing else to depend on it. And my customer know that this is the place to find me. So we said to him, you know, there's going to be a new landlord. When the new landlord comes now, you need to pay way above the market price because you've been paying you know, at a low price and the renter is going up. And he said, I don't mind doing this. Cut a long story short, we put a small little deposit and then the renter goes up. When the renter go up, we refinance the property. I don't know whether you understand the term. You know, if you rent at this yeah. price, this is your market valuation. When the renter goes up, you know, we move the property, the valuation go up. And the bank, you know, the bank refinanced the property, gave us the money to buy over this property. You know, and meanwhile, the tenant pay for the rent of the property. And this uh, 18, 19 years old girl, you know, haven't even been to university, you know, already became a millionaire basically in a short while time. And his, her friends have not even finished the university. I'm giving you a very simple example. And then maybe later on before we end this class, hang on for a little while, hang on for a little while, you know, and in a short little short while, I can maybe show you some real life example of property. You can put for very, very little money down. And then if you attend our next webcast, sure. I think it's tomorrow, uh, I will be able to show you in a more structured way and more detailed way on how you can put property with very little or no money down, especially during times like this. All right. That's awesome. Fantastic. Thank you for answering my five in one questions. <laughs> awesome. Okay. okay, so the next person will get Nisa, right? So I'm going to unmute Nisa and ask to start your video. Nisa, are you there? Yep. Hi. <laughs> okay, good. So yeah, you can you can go ahead. And ask. Okay. Um. Thank you, uh, Dr. Patrick. So um, I'm sure you've learned a lot. So uh, my question would be um, for now, which region should I look uh or pay attention to, if I want to invest in overseas uh property, and how do I find out what the master plan is? Because you were saying about the supporting strategy and strength factors or something like that. So yeah, how do we actually uh? pay attention to or what you pay attention to. I'm going to say something that shocked you. The reason I say that is because 
I teach my friends how to take a contrarian approach. What it means is that when people turn left, sometimes we need to turn right. When people turn right, you need to turn left. When people are greedy, you better be fearful. When people are fearful, you better be greedy. Who said that? Warren Buffett said that. And he's one of the most successful investors during our time. And I'm sure you agree with me that he's not stupid. And political <laughs> poverty, when people are buying, you better sell. Why? When people are crazy about buying, they keep pushing up the price. When people are selling, you better start to go and look at the property. So I tell people this, you know, because this is the worst crisis in 1,000 years. And the whole planet, there will be many countries that will be going through a worse, worse, worse crisis than, we can, than all the countries combined. So if you look at the world map, okay, let's look for, let's go to the, the micro, the macro perspective. The macro perspective is which country is very, very rich and then is going through the worst crisis. So for example, you say America, USA is the richest, the most powerful country in the world. And they have a very interesting president. And <laughs> they, have, uh, they have recorded like, you know, the, two days ago, 2,000 deaths. And yes. everything is going out of control, right? Correct? And the whole yeah. economy is going through a nosedive. It's still going further down. So I give you an example. The last global economic crisis, you know, a lot of uh, people uh, gave up their properties. They couldn't service a mortgage payment. They couldn't pay for their debt. They couldn't pay their suppliers. So many banks took over a lot of distressed property. Many insurance companies, many financial institutions, many companies, many suppliers all have distressed properties. So let me ask you this question. If you're running a public listed company, for example, you're a bank, can you advertise to everybody, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Bank of America. This month, I just took over 300 properties, distressed property. If you do that, your whole stock prices will come crashing down. People think that you're in big trouble because it means that a lot of people are not paying the bank the mortgage loan, right? So quietly, they were selling their property off and they need to sell it very, very quickly. Cut a long story short, you know, I went to the bank and I bought 1,000 properties. And the 1,000 property is all in one basket and is for 500 US dollar per property. I repeat again, huh? 500 US dollar per property. And you say, why would the bank be so stupid to sell you at such a cheap price? The reason is because the bank didn't want the property. The owners couldn't service the loan. And most of these owners already have already paid the principal sum of money. And they cannot be holding the property because they are not in the property business. Their banks are not like Singapore banks. They cannot hold on to property for too long because if somebody discovered that they've got so many dis distressed property, their whole share price will go and come it's going to come tumbling down. A lot of people is going to, you know, uh, withdraw all their money from a bank. So if you don't believe me, you Google. If you Google, you will discover that up to a few years ago, uh, 500 US dollar Detroit, people were still selling property at a price. And what I did was I spent about $10,000 to do up the property until it's rentable, until it's functional. And people were willing to pay me at the point of $30,000 for each of these property. I gave them a discount. I sold most of this property for $28,000. I made more than 100%. Today, some of these properties are worth a few hundred thousand dollars because we have gotten over the global economic crisis. So the richer the country, the worse the crisis, sometimes we have the best opportunity. If you are willing to wait just for a little while, uh, I'm happy to now get somebody to look for some program. Uh, let's look for another rich country. You know, let's look at a country like England, for example. England is uh, the fifth richest country in the world. England itself, the uh, UK is richer than the whole ASEAN combined. Okay? The whole ASEAN combined is probably number six in the world. And the uh, UK is in the top five basically. And they also have the same problem. They have a pandemic problem. They have a, a, a political problem. You know, they have an economic problem. And they also, even the prime minister caught the COVID-19 uh, virus. And I can show you real life property where people are selling you at such a cheap price. And the interesting thing is that people say, Patrick, what if I buy this property and then the prices, you know, come tumbling down? Uh, what if the prices dies? And I always tell people this, sometimes there are some properties, even in the worst crisis, the prices will still go up. So I give you an example. 
after the Lehman Brothers crash on the 15th of September 2008, all the property prices were coming down, especially in New York. I went to New York and I discovered everywhere prices were coming down. But there were five areas where prices are still going up. There were five areas where properties are going up. Why? Maybe it's a new township. Maybe it's a new high-tech center. Maybe it's a new business hub. Maybe the government and the private sector is pump, has pumped in a lot of billions of dollars into the development. You know, and people are going in early on, earlier on, the price is still at the low end, basically. Cut the long story short, you know, five areas where the price was still going up. You can even Google National Associate, Association of Realtors. I think they wrote an article subsequently that says, even in the worst of crisis, there's still prices of property that are still going up, basically. Even in Singapore, there'll be areas where you can't even buy the property in the worst crisis. And if you want to buy a property, they won't be selling you at the at the at the at the rock bottom price basically because these are all highly demanded limited areas basically. So I can show you if you're my student properties that are what we call evergreen. Evergreen property means even in the worst crisis, people will still need those properties. I can show you, for example, you know, student housing, student housing supporting international university that has been around for hundreds of years, and their campus is right you know, near to the city area. And the university rent from you, sign you a long-term renter, which means you have a very credible tenant. You have a tenancy agreement for five to 10 years sometimes, and they pay you very good renter. And they even give you a guarantee. And I can explain to you what this guarantee means. That means you are assured of the renter guarantee, uh, assured of the tenancy for the next three to five years. In other words, they pay you enough money to pay to the bank. And you need to put a small little deposit and the tenant pay off the loan for the bank, basically. And you can own this property. Literally free of charge, basically. And then, when the, pan when the pandemic is over, the price has to go up. And because it's a city area and it's commercially zoned, the prices will go up and the rental will go up at the same time. And this is how, you know, poor people become rich. You know, by capitalizing on opportunities, especially during a crisis. I hope I've explained to you the principles and strategy and show you that, you know, that this is the time. You can say, Patrick, I want to wait for a good time to buy property. But you and I know this. Good times, everybody is buying. All the prices are all very hot. You're not going to make money there. Unless you tell me you know better, you're the first one to buy. None of us know better. None of us you will be the first one to buy, right? It's like how uh, multi-level marketing people tell you, join us now, you're the first one. You'll be at the top of the pyramid, but you know you'll never be at the top, right? You know, and those people at the bottom will run away from you, basically. But in a crisis, you have the choices pick of property, they can make lots and lots of money. And I'm really, you know, dying to help people like you to show you some of these great opportunities ahead. I hope I've answered your question. Hang on for a little while and I'll show you some real-life example. I need to just find some photograph now, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, so right now, right, since you said um, you really want to show, so could you actually be more specific, show us more specific examples of owning, uh, owning a property uh, with little or no money down? Specific ones. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I know I love your question. I've been waiting for 3,000 years for somebody to ask me this question. You know, okay, I wish okay. I I'm not an academician, although I teach two master's degree program in university. I'm not a theoretician, although uh, all the things I teach, huh, uh, I like to believe they're all based on clinical research and they're all based on evidence. Uh, but I'm a practitioner. So let me see whether we can show you this property. Maybe tomorrow, uh, maybe tomorrow you attend the webcast, I can give you greater details. Yeah. So this is a property, I don't know whether you can see this uh, yeah. property. This, this, is, okay. this look like, this look, imagine it looks like parliament house, right? You know the parliament yeah. house in, in front of Padang? Uh -huh. So this mm -hmm. used to be the original library. And uh, the location is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful building. You know, with an uh, air well in the middle, exactly like Fullerton Hotel. And it is located right at the heart of the business district, right at the heart of the shopping belt, right at the heart of the entertainment uh, facilities. And round the corner, the central train station was there. And then the Chinatown was nearby. Uh, the biggest university is uh, walking distance away. Next door, 
is a university that runs degree programs for children from rich and wealthy family. They learn about music, they learn about creative media, they learn about performing arts, that kind of uh, degree courses that poor people like me will never be able to afford to go there. You know, and they've been around for many, many years and their courses are very, very expensive. I went to the bookshop, the textbook, the textbook, one textbook is worth $500. I don't know how people can afford to send their children there, basically. Cut a long story short, the owner of this uh, building was in big trouble. Why? Because of the pandemic, because of Brexit. And he had to downsize his business very quickly. He had to move his whole operation to a smaller office. And he has to do it very quickly. And he wanted to rent a small little office space from one of our developers. But he told the developers, I cannot rent the space unless I sell this big building. And if I don't sell this building fast enough, I cannot move into the office space, my whole business will die. Because in a short while time, I cannot sustain anymore. And not only I will lose my business, I will lose a lot of money. You know, I have a lot of debtors. You know, they will come after me. And I will not only uh, be in financial trouble, my family will be in financial trouble. But unfortunately, at this point in time, there were very few buyers. And the buyers were not willing to pay very quickly. They want to do their due diligence, diligence blah, 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 and all that. And, uh, and, there, were, and there were some sharks moving around that were giving, them, giving him some stupid prices, basically. Cut a long story short, our developer bought this uh, property from him way below market price, way below replacement cost, way below construction cost. That means you can't even build this property for this kind of price, basically. I help my students to own this property. I own this property also. You can own uh, this uh, property for very much cheaper uh, than the price of a car, basically. And uh, the university next door wanted to rent this building. Why? Because they want to have an extended campus. And there's no better way to extend your campus than to have the building next door. You don't have another campus so far away. And they want their administration and operation to move to that building. And part of the building, they want to use it for student housing, basically, to support some of the students. And the best student housing is next door. So it's very safe, very secure for the students to be around the corner, basically. Very convenient for a student, basically. And the university is willing to sign a long-term tenancy agreement and pay a very good renter because it's a well-located property. So I can help you to own this property for a very, very low price and you have a guaranteed renter, not just a tenancy agreement, a guaranteed renter for the next three to five years. So my question to you is this, do you think the pandemic will go on forever and ever? No. And everybody will die. I think all experts say is, you know, the pandemic should be over within 18 months. And once we find a cure, I think the property market will go up again, which means the next few months is the best time to invest in such a property and you can make a lot more money. If some of you, I don't want to spend too much time with one question, but if some of you have got, uh, want me to show you some more specific example, I'll be very happy to show you some specific example of property you can buy at a very, very low price at this point in time. I hope I've answered your question. Yeah, you did. Um, okay, so for the last question from me. Um, so you say that you can actually share all these things, right? So can you share more um, about some of your track records of your students or people who actually learned from you? Okay, in the past, you know, I'm very, very proud to say 20% of my students go on to own a property within the first month. That means once I start to mentor them, within one month, they own a property. And uh, tomorrow, maybe I'll try and find some photograph. Every time when the, the students, uh, when I help the student own the property, you know, I have a thank you dinner for them. I take a photograph, I show up to everybody. Why? Not only to encourage my student, to encourage those people who are, not with, who, are, who are still thinking and thinking and thinking and not willing to take action, to encourage them to take action. And many of my, uh, many of my students within one year go on to own a few properties, especially during this time. And many of my students, within five years, they become financially free. So I give you an example, you know, one of the property I got my student to own, you know, eight years ago was only about $150,000. Eight years later, the same property is now worth $1.8 million. And they were collecting, they are collecting $10,000 rental every month. With $10,000 rental every month, they can literally retire, you know. So two years ago, I have a group of my students and to uh, invest in a property in the northern area of uh, Melbourne. Why? 
because I saw that the government was very concerned. Melbourne was very jammed. It was congested and everybody is working and living around the city area. So they need to create another CBD area. And this is the same phenomenon all over the world. If you look at URA master plan, you know the Singapore government doesn't want everybody to work in the CBD area. So they are spacing out everybody to Tampines, to Pongo, even to Woodland area, to Jurong basically. You know, so there was this area the government was pouring in billions of dollars in the area basically. And the private sector was also pouring billions of dollars in the area itself. Cut a long story short, I helped my student to own a property there. And then two years ago, this area became the number one best selling area in the whole of Australia. So I can show you an example of property like this you can own now, where the government say, I want to have a high tech business hub in this area. And we're going to invest like $500 billion in the area. Okay, I can show you the town being built, the university being built, the schools being built, the hospital being built, the government building being built, amenities and facilities being built, and you can own the property there right now, and there's no reason why the property prices will be coming down, because there's billions of dollars poured into this area to turn this area into a high-tech hub. And which means that you own a property during this time, you not only buy at a very, very low price, and because it's a high-tech business hub, you know, there's a lot of good rental from people who are professionals, high paying job uh, executive. You get very good rental. And when the, when the pandemic is over, your prices will go up, the rental will go up and you make lots of money from there. Okay. That's <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's about it for me. Um, Alaric, back to you. Ellery has gone to buy property straight away with you. I told Ellery not to take action so quickly <laughs> until tomorrow. Yeah, I don't know who is under, who is controlling the system at this point in time. Uh, just wait for a little while and let me see whether I can get my daughter to, uh, to, uh, to see whether we can contact somebody. Thank it you. Is well. it is well. okay. okay, good. Awesome. So, um, okay. Okay, Ellery is back. Yeah, okay, great. So, um, I think we'll wrap it up. I'm going to go buy property, Ellery. Huh? Okay, I got... Sorry? I'm going to buy my first property very soon. Yeah, yeah, not so fast. I'm here to help you, guide you, coach you. So, okay, great. So, um, for those of you uh, go and attend the what tomorrow, I'll leave it to Raymond to wrap up everything. Raymond, uh, I made Raymond the host. So, Raymond will wrap up everything. And then, uh, those of you, I'll see you all tomorrow on uh, Dr. Patrick's webinar. Sounds good? Okay, no? Yeah, so, Raymond? Before we end, uh, I want to apologize to everybody. This is a no hold fast, free for all. You can ask any question that you want. So it will sound a bit messy. I may not be completely prepared, and which is good because uh, you can see my real self, my authentic self. And sometimes it's very hard to go into great details. Uh, it's good to quote some example, but very hard to go into details of the example. But if you are my student, we'll show you. You know, you not only analyze the example, you go deep in the example, you can own the property with very little or no money down. Okay, Mr. Raymond Chua. Okay, here we are. So, Angela got one last question. So, Raymond, later you let Angela ask one last question, and then maybe you can let whoever wants to ask a question ask a question. And then, uh, sure, uh, okay. I think the host, then you help me wrap up the whole thing, okay? Okay, we, we take the last question by for Patrick, then, uh, then we'll wrap it up. So, let me just look at the question. Uh, Angela, what's your question? Can you type it in? Oh, uh, Angela, are you there? Yeah, so Patrick, uh, wait, huh? Uh, Angela, can you type your question? So, due to time, we only can take last question, one last question. Yeah. Angela? Okay, Angela. Yeah, no, Angela, you're yeah, unmute, lady. Hello. Hi, uh, Patrick. Hi, Patrick. Okay, hi. I, I have one question. Actually, this one is uh, personal because what happened is I have a shop which I rented out half to somebody and that contract unfortunately end this month, end of April. And my tenant does not intend to renew because of the COVID-19. So what can be done? 
Okay, this is a very general question. It's very hard to give you a general answer. Uh, for me to give you a very good answer, I need to know uh, what's the location of a property. I need to uh, go and find out and do more research uh, about the areas and how you can use this uh, property to see whether we can look at the usages, we can look at the different type of tenancy or to make a mesh uh, tenancy or to find different, uh, even temporary use of the place. So it's very hard to give you a general answer and say, go and be all oh, this answer will solve your problem. Uh, but if you're my student, you know, I'll be very happy for you to show me the details. Uh, I will give you a 10 or 20 page report that will show you, for example, what kind of properties are available there, how much are they selling for, what's the general rental, what is so good, bad and ugly of the area, that will help you to make a better informed decision. You know, so... Uh, well, should I, I email you? <laughs> Should uh, I email you then? Uh, I'm not the organizer. You have to ask Eric <laughs> because uh, you are Eric's friend. So, uh, uh, oh no, no, no! I'm your student. <laughs> okay, so what do you write to me? Write to me. Uh, write to me. Uh, you know my email. Okay, uh, you know okay. how to contact me. You know I have okay. my personal telephone number. I gave all of you okay. my personal telephone okay. number. Okay. Okay. So uh, write to me. Uh, email to me. I'll be very happy to get. Uh, I've got a team of more than fifty people, and they're all quite free at home right now. And I'm sure more than all of us will sit down together and think through how we can help you and solve you. We've been, we've been solving a lot of problems, just to let you know. Uh, in the last uh, few months, we've been helping a lot of our students to solve a lot of their... Because they have uh, bought properties on their own uh, before they became our student. A lot of them want to sell the property, buy the property, upgrade, downgrade, rent the property. You know, we are now on standby to help all the students. So write to me again and then I'll be more than happy to help you. Okay, okay. Thank okay, you. Thank you. And, okay. okay, thanks guys. Okay, so thank you for joining us uh, today, right? So basically, uh, again, I just, just show you the link once again if you haven't uh, signed up. Sorry, I, because I am, I am, uh, I am uh, using my phone because my internet is not working, right? So this is the, uh, this is the link, right? So you can go on uh, this link. It's uh, bit.ly slash property success two. Uh, tomorrow, 7.30, I think uh, Alaric will also give you the uh, link for you to sign up. So if you come for the tomorrow session, at the end of the session, we will give you a, 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 a digital crash course on how you can buy properties with little or no money down. Yeah, so this is uh, the follow-up program with you guys. Uh, so let me just go back. Okay, so thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, then I will look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. See you guys tomorrow. Bye. I really have fun. This is great stuff. Yeah, I hope we can go on forever and ever. Yeah, I wanna... Thanks, guys. See you. Bye-bye.